There is a uh, special event that is coming up at Troutbeck, uh, the Troutbeck Symposium. It's coming up uh, April 28th and April 29th, and it features students from area schools uh, uncovering and learning history and stories related to uh, the local uh, black community, and they're going to share these in a symposium that's hosted by Troutbeck. There'll be other people uh, at that symposium as well, uh, but we might as well uh, start off with the with the very beginning. Uh, Rowan Mikrowski. Rowan, uh, maybe you can tell me how this all came about, this, uh, this symposium coming up at Troutbeck. So last year in my class, Coloring Our Past, uh, students discovered a lot of fascinating history uh, involving our local Black, Indigenous, and people of color population, a history that really hasn't been, been, been known or, or certainly shared. And in the course of that research, we discovered uh, the remarkable history of Troutbeck, Amenia, New York. It's, it's a place I've driven past a thousand times. There's a sign on the front that refers to the Bentons who used it as a retreat for transcendentalist writers. Um, but we discovered that the Bentons sold it to a family called the Spingarn, or we learned, we didn't discover. Um, and the Spingarns were really active in both the NAACP as well as the Harlem Renaissance. And as a result, Troutbeck was really this meeting place for, for all these uh, civil rights pioneers and all these artists of the Harlem Renaissance. And so the idea came, let, let, let's get students to investigate these stories and share these stories with this community. And let's make that's what history is about because this history has been buried, lost or ignored for too long. And it's, we just have tons of treasures in our own backyard. So uh, we started a project um, with, with, a, with a, a number of local schools, um, public and, pri and independent and, and middle and high school. And you have some guests today from these students who are doing this research who are going to uh, share their thoughts um, on what they're doing. All right. Now, so this program, if I remember right, didn't I, I think I interviewed, interviewed people last year about the program you were doing uh, at Salisbury, did I not? You did, Marshall. You interviewed Caleb May, who, who uh, made a documentary called Coloring Our Past about a local family, Black family, traced their roots back to Salisbury to 1800. And uh, that uh, documentary has gone on to win a number of awards, as a matter of fact. So good memory. All right. Well, that's, it's amazing how far this whole idea that germinated a long time ago has come uh, to lead to this at Troutbeck. So seeing as uh, it started off uh, over at the Salisbury, uh, Clarence Nurse, uh, let's talk to you a little bit of it. Um, what, what particular part did you, did you study and undercover information on, in, in, this, in this event? Well, well when Mr. McCriskey came to us um, with, the, uh, with the symposium, you know, I was... I was at a point in the class where I had taken it last year. So I was running a more uh, quote unquote co-teacher role in the class. Uh, so I, you know, I got a few classmates together and told them about it. And we, you know, we immediately reached out to the owners of the Troutbeck of Troutbeck. And uh, we just said to them, like, hey, what's this all about? What do you need from us? How can we help? You know, and they they gave us a whole list of things uh, to do. Uh, one of them was we you know we had a one pager. It was to send out, out to potential sponsors. We got that out. Uh, you know, we've been doing research. My classmate, he's been doing a lot of research on the Spingarn family. Uh, just you know, familiarize ourselves with the actual history of Troutbeck itself. Um, and yeah, we, you know, we had a little kickoff event at the start of the year. I, I spoke at it. Uh, you know, I showed the video that Caleb May last year made and it, it went really well. And yeah. So, so this is, a, this has been quite a, a, a pretty big effort seeing you're all different students from, from different schools. I want to, I want to move on for a second here. Why don't we bring in, um, Amber, uh, Amber Bretz, uh, how are you, Amber? I'm good, thank you. All right, and uh, Amber, um, you're you're at Hotchka School, right? Yes, I am. All right, so what did you think of when you first heard about this and started to get involved in this project? What were your thoughts, and, and what are your thoughts now that it's just about to come to fruition? Well, I first um, came upon the idea or was aware that there's a symposium um, through my current NAACP course. Um, so this spring, I'm taking an elective that is um, exploring the early historical roots of the NAACP. 
Um, and this opportunity to attend the symposium and present my own work wouldn't have otherwise come about if it weren't for this course and it weren't for my teacher, Dr. Norman. Um, so I'm super thankful. Um, we earlier this, um, earlier in the course, um, we had a documentarian come to our class um, and he sort of spoke of um, some of the students at Salisbury who had um, created their own documentaries and that really um, inspired me. Um, and it led me to want to create my own documentary, which I hope I will be presenting at the symposium later this month. Um, so it's crazy how quick the entire process has gone, but I've already started um, composing my narration and, and I'm uh, making a lot of progress in my documentary. So that's very exciting. Now, I want to mention to everybody that uh, we, we, we've got a certain amount of students here, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this really included basically uh, a couple hundred students over the course of a year? Um, yes, currently in my class, there are about 10 students, so it's pretty intimate, it's pretty um, close-knit group of students, and we're all pursuing different projects, which I think is really cool. Um, I'm currently um, looking into the discrepancy between Northern and Southern education, specifically through the lens of W.E.B. Du Bois, um, so be sort of um, analyzing how his experience down at Fisk University varied, um, at his, um, varied from his experience at Harvard which he later attended. All right, for just a second, let's throw it uh, back to Clarence. Clarence, uh, let's talk about the website uh, that, that's been made by uh, you and the classmates involved in this. Yep, so if you head over to www.coloringourpast.org, you'll see uh, just sort of a, a class hub for us. And the biggest part, right on the home page, it'll be all about the Trivec Symposium, and you'll uh, you know, just a part of it is, you know, we have a link to a, a ticket site, but if you dig a little deeper into the site, you'll see a bunch of student work, you know, uh, work not necessarily related to Troutbeck, but that will be uh, showcased at the symposium. Uh, you'll see work from Marvelwood, Hotchkiss, IMS, Usatonic, it was Save Project, you'll see everyone involved in this. And you'll see made, uh, kids in class have made, I made one. And there's, uh, there's also a blog, uh, you know, students from all schools. I had the first one. There was a student from Hotchkiss, student from IMS, student from, uh, yeah, I think that's it actually. But yeah, we put blog posts up uh, just about uh, little stories that we discover or we learn about throughout the year. We are talking about a symposium that is coming up uh, at Troutbeck April 28th through the 29th, the Troutbeck Symposium. Uh, and what the symposium will do is basically uh, take a look at, at uh, with local and regional students and participating schools. Uh, you'll find out what they found out uh, from the students. And there's also uh, going to be supporters uh, throughout two days of programming, including lectures, performance, visits, uh, scholars. It's, 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 it's a, a pretty in incredible event. Uh, I wanna go now to Housatonic Valley Regional High School. Still, Sylvie Stiffer. Sylvie, uh, are you there? Yes. Did the bell go off already? <laughs> uh, so what, what do you think about this project, Sylvie? Uh, uh, and, and what you thought about going into it, what you've learned uh, uh, going into it and being into it? Well, I thought it was a very interesting topic to begin with because I've grown up in Sharon, lived there my whole life, and I never knew that Troutbeck had such um, kind of deep ties to so many different communities. And so when we were presented with this opportunity, I thought that it was very interesting and new. So my entire history class, we have been working on different aspects. So we've been divided into different groups and our end goal is creating these informational plaques that are going to eventually be on the property itself. So our goal was to not only learn about these all these different topics, but also be able to present them to the public in a very accessible way that anyone can see. You know, it's interesting. And uh, if you want to come in on this, Rowan, you can. Um, over the years, um, 
the history that's been made in this area and the people that have been in this area are pretty amazing. And we especially know that from the W.E.B. Du Bois site up in Great Barrington, where they're going to actually have a statue. Uh, it took a while to get that through, and they've named a school after it. Uh, Rowan, did these students really find out how important this area is in, in Black history? You're right. We're really blessed. Uh, we also have Mumbet over in Sheffield. We have the Massachusetts 54th, which was a Western Massachusetts regiment. Um, the first enlistee was uh, Milo Freeman from, from Canaan. Uh, so the history is here. And those are just the, no, the known history. And so once they kind of peel back the next layer, um, Marcel, wait till you see what they find out. I mean, we have connections to John Brown. As a matter of fact, that um, the, the man who radicalized John Brown was most likely from Canaan. So, so the, the kids are getting a sense of just, just how momentous this area, it, just how rich this area is in this type of history. And I'll throw this out and you can all take it one at a time. We'll start, we'll start off with you, Sylvie. Has this changed your, your, your look at black history in relation to America? Um, I'd say that it has just because I've always seen this area as not being so connected to the many communities, um, but especially the black community. So I've really like my eyes have been open to a lot that I truly had no idea about. All right, and Paisley, what about you? Um, I mean, what was the question? The question was the question we were having. A, there was a conversation going on. We are, what, what, what the question is, is has this changed uh, your understanding about the black community and black relations with with white America, not only in this community, but uh, throughout the country and the world? Yeah. Um, yes, I think definitely. So we were looking into uh, civil rights leaders and activists, and um, my small group chose to do Ida B. Wells, a documentary on her. Um, and her anti-lynching uh, essays and speeches and sort of just her life. And so the different experiences uh, that she had and just kind of seeing them through her eyes is uh, really interesting um, and like a different perspective um, throughout history uh, than just through, than instead of just through uh, textbooks and different things we see, we get different perspectives of, um, people who agreed with her versus disagreed um, and ways she handled that and circumstances and things. All right. Uh, and Amber, I, I'm going to put the same question to you. Uh, did it give you a deeper understanding, change your, your outlook on, uh, on relations, race relations? Yes, I, I would say that it definitely did. Um, I think specifically exploring um, the life of Du Bois a lot more. Like, obviously, I've known him as a pioneer. But I feel like a lot of times we overlook like the experience that um, served as his motivation or sort of um, had an influence on his life and the way he came to be as a social activist. Um, so I think, first of all, his work is really inspiring. But um, coming to embrace my own Black identity more and knowing that he grew up not too far away from Hotchkiss, um, I think is really cool. And I'm excited to um, see if we can continue to like educate my other peers about um, Du Bois the um, close proximity of some of these really great resources. All right, and Clarence, uh, for you, I guess I guess the question for you would be the same, but I would know what the answer would be. But uh, by, by creating that website, uh, have you, has it helped you uh, talk to other people that don't have the understanding of, of race relations and, and how important this area really is in, in, in race relations? Yeah, most definitely. And you know, I, I talked to my parents about this course. And for example, uh, one day my mom was like, you know, it, it really makes you think about what other stories, like the ones we've learned about are, you know, have been buried in other places around the world, you know, in the country, because we've learned so much about just a small, a small part of New England, you know, just, uh, Massachusetts and Northwest corner of Connecticut, it really makes you wonder about the other stories that have been lost and buried. Yeah, and it also, it makes you also wonder when you take a look at uh, today's news, uh, and this, this is just a statement I'll make, uh, if, a, if a program like this would have been allowed any, in, in, in certain parts of this country uh, or not, I, I would say not because 
Uh, it, it brings it brings about uh, an underside of this country that more and people more and more people are finding out about, and more and more people uh, want to kind of suppress and keep it in the past. We're talking once again about the uh, Trautbeck Symposium, which is coming up the 28th and 29th at Trautbeck. Uh, we've got uh, uh, different students from the schools, some of the schools that participated in this. And uh, just before we wrap this up, Rohan, I want to want to talk to you about how you feel, how this is really developed now, and where do you go from here, and where does this program go from here? Well, th this program really, I believe, is what schools need to be. I mean, schools schools no longer can be textbooks with unit quizzes and unit exams that uh, curated material by someone who lives far away. Um, history is in our own backyards, and until kids can, can see that and relate to it, and also be historians rather than learn history, I mean, that's what will empower good citizenship. And that, that's that's the future of this country. And that's what education has to evolve to. So history is doing is my answer, Marshall. Yeah, I, I, th I think getting involved, you're right. Uh, Cause I remember in high school, we had a couple of teachers and this is a long time ago, back in 1971, uh, who threw away the textbooks and uh, we just delved ourselves into things. And these weren't things that we, we really knew about. And we had, a, not only did we learn a lot but we also had a great time learning it as well. Well, I want to thank uh, Paisley, Amber, uh, Clarence, uh, and uh, Sylvie uh, for joining us today. And uh, Rohan, keep us up, uh, updated on this. We'll we'll play this interview. Uh, we'll have all the information, all the different links, so people can find out more about it on our On Demand page. People just have to go to RobinHoodRadio.com, click on On Demand, and find this interview, and all the links will be there. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how this uh, this turns out, not only for the students, uh, but for the future, Owen, and, 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 and more programs like this in our area. Thanks, Marshall. And, and it'll be April 29th. Uh, like Clarence said, www.coloringourpast.org gives you ticketing information. And we look forward to seeing you. And Everybody, once again, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us.